Hello and welcome to my VV Beta graphics tutorial. My name is Takuma Nakata. I'm an interaction designer based in Kyoto. And it's been a while since I uploaded my last uh, VV Beta tutorial. And that's because uh, Node Festival was just happening and it was a big, big thing. And I was busy following up, also giving a tutorial there. Anyways, uh, today in this tutorial, I wanted to share uh, a small technique on how to make this kind of like wireframed uh, animation based on uh, how to say a video input. And uh, this is a uh, sort of like second second episode out of this uh, creating mesh out of images in convex so and I uploaded this uh, tutorial around half years ago and I just got a feedback that uh, someone's interested in converting this to a three dimensional geometry so I decided to make this tutorial so if you haven't followed this tutorial please watch that one first to make sure that you understand what's happening here um, anyways uh, let's get started so here what I'm doing so in my in our last tutorial uh, we made this so based on uh, so there's like a video input that's the, as a background it's a bit distorted but then I'm getting, I'm taking a, how to say, a point out of uh, that video and then using this node called uh, counter and parameter and then getting sort of like, how to say, the, how do you say, it? like the highlighted position of this Im moving image. And then I'm uh, using this convex hole, also this one as a node to only detect the outer, how to say, points of this entire point. So you, as you can see, there's a lot of points here. But so this red, uh, how do you say, uh, bounding box is generated use, using convex so and then I'm creating a polling out of it. So, so that, that's what's happening here. So today I'm going to share how you can actually convert uh, this to a geometry, so using this convex uh, output from a convex hole and then inputting that uh, to as, a, as an index, index geometry buffer and converting that to a geometry and then giving it some shaders. Oh, I don't actually do I need this. Yeah, I need this. Yeah, flat normal and then converting that to a pipe frame. So this one can also be it's a mesh, so you can actually use it as a mesh or you can use it as a wireframe as how you want. But I think this looks really interesting. Um, so I wanted to share how you can work on that. Okay, so uh, let's get started. For So for this tutorial, I'm not gonna start everything from scratch. I'll just delete some uh, parts from our last uh, tutorial and I'll just connect new nodes to those to explain what's happening. So this is our starting point. I also don't need this convex hole for now. So now we already got this image as a background and then uh, getting the points out of this video. So here, these are the points from the video and counter and parameter is outputting those. I need this avoid nil to avoid like no values and because some part of this video, there's no actor and the entire video will be black and then VVV will uh, export and null, but that that doesn't work well with, with the others. So I have these and then vector, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so first thing, uh, what we want to do, we want to use a convex hole, convex hole 3D uh, geometry because we want to, uh, how to say, use this point to generate a 3D geometry. And I think in our last tutorial, we used this convex hole 2D because we just wanted things to be flat. But for today, we need this convex hole 3D, which is, yeah, which should be, if you download VVV, should be installed there. Okay, so we're using this and this guy needs a 3D input. So we need to connect a 3D input. So we need to connect this guy and this guy, and then another value. So I'll use a vector 3D join. And then here I'll connect the X and Y. And then we'll connect, uh, how do you say, the third, uh, this here. And then should work. But as you can see, this convex hole is turning red 
in some point. And this is something we don't want because as you can see, now this vertices and indices, he's not outputting anything. And that's because we have problems with this vector 3D input. And I'm not really sure why this is happening, but you can solve this by adding a random spread, for example, and give some sort of like uh, static values for Z. For example, I add like 200 random spreads. And as you can see now, convex hole is working properly. So this is a trick that you need to remember before using this convex hole, because if you keep uh, seeing this red node, uh, convex hole will not export any single values. So make sure that you have this spread, random spread connected here. Okay, so that's the first step. Now we have the convex hole of, uh, how do you say, this uh, contour parameter output. So now we want to generate a mesh out of this. To do so, what I often do is I open up flat normals. Flat normals is a node included in instance noodles. So I'll upload, I'll put the link to down install instance noodles on the comment. But if you press F1, this one is actually doing exactly the same as what I wanted to share for today's uh, tutorial. So it has convex hole 3D here, and then it's using index geometry buffer to convert these uh, values to a geometry. And then once it's converted as a geometry, we have to connect this flat normals to get like normal data and things like that together as a geometry. Otherwise you won't see any result as an output. So this flat more normal makes it easy for you to, to output is as a render renderable geometry. So yeah, what I would basically do is I just copy paste these nodes from here. Uh, and then I'll just bring those to the to my main patch. So I just copy, uh, don't save. Then I'll just put those nodes here. And then I would delete this convex hole and connect this input X, Y, Z here. Okay, we're almost ready. So last thing I would do is I'll add a Fong uh, point. Could be whatever shader. And then I'll just connect this flat normal here. And let's see what that, how this happens. Okay, now we've got something rendered. This looks okay. I'll just reset. So as you can see now, we have a very nice uh, Fong shaded uh, geometry generated out of this dancer image. So this is basically just a 2D dancer image. But as you can see, if I rotate the camera, it's, it's, it's a 3D geometry. And as you can see right now, I think the Z is too extruded. And that's because this random spread, which is connected to Z, input has one as a width. So if I lower this down, we can get a smaller, thinner geometry out. So you can control this by, by just moving around this. And as you can see, uh, sometimes you can see the dots inside the geometry. And that's because the face of these uh, geometry are, how, how does it flipping around? And I'm not, I actually don't know how to solve this. So if you know how to solve it, please let me know. But I, I'm guessing that the, the normal of this geometry are uh, like flipping around front and black back. And that, that's the reason why it keeps flicking. And it's not really good. But in my case, I don't really use this as a geometry. I connect this node called pipe frame, which is also included in the instance noodles. So there's no, it's a pipe frame. And then I connect pipe frame under flat normal and I usually use it use like this as a how do you say as a wireframe uh, result rather than uh, a geometry in this case it doesn't really matter if it's flipping around or not so so this is how I often use uh, this guy this technique and just lower down the ambient color for now Okay, so this is uh, basically it, uh, how to make, uh, how do you say, geometry out of uh, convex hole and uh, counter. Uh, if you want to play around with the z-axis, you can also like, I don't know, change this value or like specify the z-axis to make 
sure that these are like in your shape that you want. And just to be clear, I want to explain what's happening uh, here together with index geometry buffer. So this is a bit complicated, what it's basically doing. So it's this zip thing is specifying like, okay, this guy has three, uh, how do you say? Uh, vertices position, which is specifies as an input element. So input element one is position and it has RGB. So these are vector 3D float values. So it should have three vector float as an input and that's why it's specified three. So this guy is giving X, Y, Z. So make sure that, you know, this zip will output three for this input. And this one, I think it's a value for texture coordinate, which should have X, Y. I'm not, I forgot how to, how to put a texture coordinate here, but I think tweaking these should solve your problem with this flickering effect. And you can also add like different input elements. Like right now, I think there's only two, but we can also add like three and then say we want to add a normal here. And by doing this, you don't really have to write anything, but you can specify what kind of geometry you're outputting. And I'm not very familiar with these, so I can't go deeper. But if you're interested in learning this, uh, try digging index geometry buffer uh, F1. It should have a help patch here. So that's what it's basically doing uh, here. And then here you need to specify the index uh, vertices this count and this can be just done by uh, how does it counting the entire vertices out and then dividing that by three because we don't need X, Y, Z in total. We only need one. So dividing by three will output the vertices count. And here are the indices. Uh, convex hole outputs the indices. So we can just connect that and then count the amount of indices and put it here. So it's quite like straight forward. Yeah, and by doing that, you can actually generate a geometry. So if you, for example, if if you don't want to generate a geometry out of these image, but you can also connect, for example, a random spread here and generate a geometry by yourself. Uh, for example, I'll just add like 2000 here. And then here I have like 2000 uh, spread out. So it has uh, 200, sorry, 2000, I'll just add 2000. So now I have like 2000 spread out and this convex hole is detecting only the, the convex, the outer convex hole points and then creating a geometry out of that. We can see that by stride buffer, dynamic buffer 3D. And then we can connect this one to sprite buffer here. And then random spread. And then I just connect this one on top. Oh, wait, oh, I need a spread count here. So this is the amount of uh, points that we're, uh, so it has from this random spread, but then convex hole is only detecting the most outer points. And then, um, yeah, so this, this whole part is connecting those and converting that. So if you change, for example, the, the indices, so these indices, like, I don't know how to explain this, but this is, this is a, how you sort the number of each uh, vertices. So if you tweak this, you can make your lines shape a bit more clear, for example. So yeah, you can play around quite a lot with this. Yeah, I think uh, that was it uh, for today. And in our next tutorial, I'm planning to share uh, how to import like huge amount of uh, video files, uh, like working in real time. So using HAP format and DDS format inside VVV. So that, that's my plan for our next tutorial. I'll upload that this Friday. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.